As you heard, I'm a general surgeon who trained in South Africa, mainly in trauma. I am um, the now a general surgeon in Scotland doing mainly colorectal. I do some um, training in, in East Africa. I think I was the first South African surgeon to become a fellow of the old ASEA. So if, if I'm a bit confused like the uh, uh, proverbial chameleon in a smarty box, um, please forgive me. But um, I have a declaration of interest and like Samuel Eto said, I work in Europe, but I sleep in Africa. So if you want to ask why, why would we teach critical care in Africa, well, it's because we were asked. Firstly, to help with health officers in Hawassa, and then by the previous president of Kusexa in 2011. Critical care has now become part of the Kusexa curriculum at both membership and fellowship levels. And there's this very interesting um, publication from Uganda that showed that people who get into critical care or intensive care in um, Africa tend to be young. They have diseases from which they can recover quickly and they can get back into economic activity, unlike the situation with our older population in the Western world. So the aim of our project was then to develop a curriculum based on universal principles of critical care, and ad but adapted to local situations. The aim of the course is to teach thinking processes around the physiology of critical illness, and then how do you support organ function while the patient recovers? And this is irrespective of whether the injury was caused by a major injury, major surgery, or sepsis, because the physiological pathway of deterioration is the same, that pathway of organ support is the same. We, we try to continually analyze our course content and delivery through evaluation and feedback, and then it was important to us to, to assess if the course influenced practice. So you might ask what's critical care? Well, for this course it depends on good clinical observations. It means rapid assessment. We, we slaves to the ABCDE approach in assessment and supportive systems and further assessment. But we teach them thorough assessment, effective decision making, and then specific interventions to support organ function. The aim, therefore, was to help trainees think straight under pressure in the clinical area, because they often have to manage a number of critically ill patients at the same time, and they're often alone, especially at night. We hoped that we could provide them with the necessary knowledge, technical and communication skills to, to make them successful in this field, but it's not about making them intensivists. This course is about what you do before the patient needs ICU. So, the, um, can I have the next slide, please? Um, I th and, and then, on, sorry, I, I'd sent in a newer, um, a, a modified so our presentation, so this is, I think, the original. Uh, anyway, so, so we follow a strict ABCDE approach. The, um, as you can see, there's an introduction, then it's about assessment, life support, airway, breathing, circulation things, and then what disables patients? Confusion and, and the psychology of, of health, of, of critical illness, but there are things like sepsis, burns, anesthesia, pain that all disable patients. And then we have the extras. And as you can see, we've brought in things like obstetric critical care, and then the difficult topics like, like quality control and end of life care. So we have looked at the domains of learning of knowledge, judgment, decision making, practical skills, and non-technical skills. And we've developed assessment tools to assess the, the participants of the course in all these domains. So you can see this very thorough end of course and continuous assessment. To, to support that, next slide, um, please, next slide. So, so to support that, we have provided reading material in critical care. On invitation from the international office from University of Toronto, we wrote a series of articles 
which were published from December 11 to April 2013. For those of you who know the Ptolemy Project or the Surgery in Africa Reviews that Professor Johnny referred to this morning, we wrote a faculty handbook, which, which is for new tutors in Africa, and we hope to produce a handbook for participants within the next few months. This will be available online, open access, for free. So if you go and, and look at this, we have um, so far um, presented 10 courses, some independently, but most through the MSE course that, that um, Mr. Lane, Bob Lane spoke about this morning. Um, and if we look at the, at the um, course results, Next, just it's, yeah, the presentation's different. Okay, if you go, no, just go back, please, to the gra for previous graph. Um, okay, the, before we get to that, I, I'll just say the course was completed by more than 200 um, participants. Um, 95 of, five of these were surgical trainees. The rest were consultants, health officers, nurses, and anesthetic assistants. We've trained over 20 CUSEXA tutors, and the course, um, CUSEXA has now decided that they will take this over from next year as their designated critical care course. This slide shows that this is the correlation of the results from tests for critical care on the far left for, for written tests, and in the middle here, for the continuous assessment, and it just shows you that there's good correlation within that surgical emergencies course of all the outcomes, whether it's test, formal tests or continuous assessment for all the modules, um, whether it's critical care, general surgery, orthopedics, that there's not wide deviation. And if you go to the next slide, you will see this is the feedback we got from trainees and the score is out of five, not out of six. So the feedback generally was very good and very constant. The only time I must say that we scored five out of five for some topics was when Joseph ran the course, not me. But you will see there was a dip, for example, in pediatric life support, and that's when we tried problem-based learning, which we found didn't work. Um, with, with trainees who, who were not used to that. So we changed the course. So it just shows that we have continuous feedback, shows good inter and intra course um, reliability. N next, please. Um, and here are some examples of, of feedback points. Of course, I'll show you the best ones, but the trainees valued small group tutorials, interactive teaching, the course organization and structure, and the rapport with faculty, clarity of scenarios. So the emphasis was on simple and practical things that will make a difference, um, was, was one of the quotes. Another quote is, overall, the critical care component was an eye-opener to things that we take for granted in daily practice. So after six months, 100% of the, um, when we asked them to assess or, or to give us feedback, 100% of trainees reported that the course was very valuable in practice, which gives us very good content and face validity. So the, and some quotes are, the, the critical care course made a tremendous difference in the way I deal with critically ill patients. My treatment is more focused and goal-directed, and I have adequate scientific knowledge to direct the process. My communication skills in referring, presenting patients has improved. And then there's this little vignette that says, I have the experience of looking after a severely septic patient due to fecal peritonitis. The patient got a cardiac arrest and acute kidney injury during their stay in ITU, but managed to survive. Critical care principles were applied in looking after this patient. So in conclusion then, um, if we go to the final slide, please. It says that it's possible to develop a surgical critical care course that that meets training needs in a different clinical environment based on universal principles but adapted through short PDSA cycles from input by local faculty and participants. 
quantitative feedback indicated good intra and intercourse reliability and feasibility and qualitative feedback, especially after applying this in clinical practice, indicated good content, predictive, construct, and face validity. Um, and then there should be a page of references. No, okay, but thank you very much. Um, I apologize. <laughs>